Han, we've come this far, but we can't save a robot unless we're on a mission. No time to pat ourselves on the back. Select another question so we can... In Greek myth, Pan invented the first musical instrument. One day along the banks of a river, Pan sighed a long sigh. His breath produced a sad sound as it passed through the reeds that grew along the river. With the reeds, he made a shepherd's pipe. There are countless musical instruments throughout the world. What kind of instrument is the saxophone? A saxophone, eh? Well, it's electric, and you bang on it with sticks. And it's really, really big. Yes, that big electric drum-like thing that has always been one of my very favorite instruments. I adore Beethoven's Saxophone Symphony Number no. 3, don't you? I sure do, Polly. Once again, you've pinned the tail on the donkey. The saxophone is an enormous electric drum set. Some of the world's most accomplished classical composers have paid homage to its electrifying beat. Oh, great. No more saxophones if Polly gets her way. I love their mournful songs. Drums are nice, but we've got plenty of drums. Click on the inventory button to put away the transquizzer. Oh, beat it, Motley. I'm sick of your whining. If you're so upset, try to find Bonglebot, the robot I sent to take the wind out of the saxophone. To find Bonglebot, first you'll have to find these four clues. A windmill, a birthday cake, a bone, and a seashell. God, Bonglebot, the six-armed robot drummer, when he gets wailing, there's no stopping him, just like there's no stopping Polly. Time to find those clues or we're beat. Careful now, I'm gonna sense... Sensors on... Keep still while I sense around for clues. Bingo! I've sensed a mission clue in the kitchen. Is it too much to ask for people to leave the doors unlocked around here? Well, we can figure out the combination again. Hurry, hurry, hurry! I'm growing weak with hunger. It looks like you have to solve an addition problem to open this lock. You've got the first lock. Two more to go. This time you'll have to solve a subtraction problem. Good luck. Right, you got two locks. Just one more. You'll need to know how to multiply to solve this problem. Ready? I think that number's right. Try again. Nope, that's not right. Nope. That's not right. Uh-uh-uh. Try again. Nope, that's not right. Again. 
The ones place is for all numbers less than 10. In an equation like this, the ones place is the first column from the right. I don't think that number's right. Nope, that's not right. You did it! I knew Polly couldn't keep us out. We're in the kitchen. Just the right combination of delicate flavors. All right, you've won, and now maybe he'll shut up. Thank you so much, and please, this is for you. Stow that clue and you're in. No mission clues here. Let's try it. Looks like the door is locked again. We'll have to figure out the password to open it. Hey, Beethoven! No need to shout, Bartley. I'm here and ready to help, if you need it. To make a picture. Draw. Man, you're... Color. You've got a real talent. Story. Great. Funny. Well, you got all the words. Now to unscramble the password. Easier said than done. Yes, the password is cartoon. 
Moon. We're in. Follow me. Polio, 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 polio. We're ready. All right, Botchley. Time to sing for your supper. I want to hear it like it was meant to be heard. Click on the music tablet to play that tune. The music is all mixed up. If you want to hear how it's supposed to sound, click on me and I'll play it for you. To play the piece as you've arranged it, click on the play button on the instrument selector. Go. This song is a little sea chanty from the days of sailors and pirates. They sang it every time they hoisted a sail. I guess we don't have time. Well, put those invention points in your inventory so we can continue saving robots. Okay, there aren't any mission clues on this floor. Let's go searching on another floor. Of course. Well, the door's locked again. Time to figure out the combinations to those locks. Hurry, hurry, hurry! I'm growing weak with hunger. It looks like you have to solve an addition You got the first lock. Two more to go. This time you'll have to solve a subtraction problem. All right, you got two locks. Just one more. You'll need to know how to multiply to solve this problem. Polly couldn't keep us out. We're in the kitchen.
Thank you. You truly are a master chef. All right, you've won, and now maybe he'll shut up. For providing such a fine feast, here's a little tip. <laughs> okay, stash the... Okay, there aren't any mission... Okay, all sensors indicate that Polly hid a mission clue in the professor's biosphere. <clears throat> we'll pick... Ooh, we're back under the biosphere. <laughs> Ooh. Hey, Dripley, here's a question to haunt your nightmares. Which worm can grow to be 100 feet? An earth? Earthworm, a tapeworm, or a leech? Just a lucky guess. What a waste. I have tons of difficult questions to ask you, but you only get one at a time. Which animal cannot fly? The flying fish, the elf owl, or the golden eagle? Wait till next time. cat food the chipmunk the chuckwalla or the mackerel everyone knows that here's another fishy question which animal eats a lot of fish a scorpion a tree frog or a cod that was way too easy you're not going anywhere until you answer this one. What part of a plant keeps it in place? The stem, the roots, or the leaves? Big deal, you got one right. Located, a meat-eating animal. This is a carnivore. Shimmerizer spotted. Spymatron activated. Digester on. This dentometer indicates. An egg tooth allows this animal to chip its way out of the egg when it hatches. Hey, nice landing. Click. Nope, there's nothing here. Found. Shrimp-like underwater creature that's... Found. Animal that hasn't changed in 600 million years. Moves around underwater by pulsating its body. Is often poisonous. This is a jellyfish. Notes from underground. Found. The own. Found. An amphibian that is moist, slimy, and jumps. This is a frog. <laughs> Videotape. A rain... <laughs> Invertebrator on. This animal is an arachnid. It has eight legs, not six, like an insect. This is a spider.
surface detector on. A fish that can swim out of the water at 35... Ossifier readout. A bony fish with a long, sleek shape. Hey, nice landing. Click on the key on the... That was nice. There are no mission... Huh. I'm getting a strong clue reading in the observatory. <laughs> There's Barry's transmission and our hint. You better act fast before it's sucked into the black hole. Polly's hint six radio packets big. Nice shoot. You got a radio pack. Wait a maneuver. You got enough break. You got another radio wave packet. You dealt with that comet. Your asteroid bites. Nice shoot. You got a radio packet. You got a radio packet. All right, you got all the radio packets. Now we can decode Polly's hint. Back at the alien decoder, and it looks like Polly's hint is about to reach us from the black hole. I can't make Heidner. Oh, you make quick sense out of that mess of sentence. Not done yet. There's more to figure out. I couldn't make any sense out of that, but you managed to find a real sentence. Great. I couldn't make any sense out of that, but you managed to find a real sentence. Great. Great! You decoded one of the sentences. Uh, something's not right. We gotta fix this sentence. You decoded one of the sentences. Okay, now here's the next piece of Polly's clue. Great! You decoded the entire hint. Can you hear me roar in the night? My group of stars is called the Lion. I am difficult to find because I do not look like a lion. What do I look like? Some people call me the backwards question mark. Do you know what a question mark looks like? Okay, you unscrambled the hint. Quick, to the star chart so we can find that clue. You need to figure out which constellation Polly sent her father's spaceship to. Click on the star chart. Click on any of the constellations and this machine will tell you a little bit about them. Polly's clue should help you figure out the right constellation. If you think you know it, then click on the constellation again. Leo the lion is the fi- Way to go! You picked the right constellation, and now the ship is heading back here. We made it! All right, no doubt about it. There's a clue in the robot maze. Hmm, we're back at the maze again. See the box down there? Maybe Polly has put something in there again. <laughs> You're so right, Botley. And this time, it's not gonna be easy. Maybe you and your little friend should just give up now and go play with some of my old baby toys. Someday. Don't listen.
See if you can figure out where you went wrong. Change the program, then try running it again. Fantastic! The robot made it through the maze. You are some slick programmer. Just put the clue in the inventory and let's beat a pack out of this place. All right, we got all the mission clues. We've collected all the mission clues. to ring number two. Joel, we've got 100% energy now, so let's go save the world. We've got everything we need. We should go to... I hope you're ready for more adventure. Time to finish up another mission. Click the on button to start the wheel. Welcome to Hollywood Squares with Monty Monitor. Answer all the questions. And you, yes you, can save the world. Rescue Bongobot, the six-armed robot drummer, and he'll give you a handshake you'll never forget. Your first clue is a windmill. The windmill will show you the subject of your mission. Windmills were once used for grinding up grain in a process called milling. Windmills perform useful work because wind has what? You're off to a great start. Wind is moving air, and moving air has energy that windmills put to use. Today, windmills are used to turn the wind's energy into electricity. What creates beautiful sound with the energy of the wind? 
No, the wind can't music to my ears. A wind chime will tinkle away whenever a breeze passes, thanks to the energy of moving air. Wind chimes are played by the wind. But which of the following is a wind instrument played by a musician? Well, blow me down. You're right again. Saxophones are called wind instruments because you blow into them to make music. The sax is made from brass. Its curved neck produces jazzy sounds. So we're on our way to the invention of the saxophone. I'm jazzed. Your second clue is a birthday cake. Make a wish and you'll discover the year when saxophones were created. You should cut your next birthday cake into nine million slices. That's because you share your birthday with nine million people. Before a birthday cake is sliced, everybody sings the words to the famous birthday song. What do you call the words to a song? Go tell it on the mountain. Ha <laughs> ha! The human voice is the only instrument that can sing lyrics. Which group of music makers does not sing lyrics? Excellent! Orchestras are large groups of musicians who usually play classical music. The orchestra, as we know it, was born around 1600, two and a half centuries before the saxophone was invented. When was the saxophone invented? Try adding next time. Impressive! The saxophone was first invented for military bands. Soon, all kinds of bands and orchestras were playing the sax. You've discovered the year of your mission, 1846. That means Polly sent Bongo Bot 150 years into the past. Keep going, we gotta find out where she sent it. The third clue is a bone. The bone will show you where in the world you have to go. The oldest musical instruments ever found were the bones of a woolly mammoth. 35,000 years ago, people made music by banging the bones together. The prehistoric woolly mammoth bones are most similar to which modern instrument? You're no bonehead. <laughs> Whether you're hitting bones together or banging a drum, you're playing a percussion instrument. A percussion instrument is an instrument that makes a noise when it's beaten or shaken. A drum produces a beat called rhythm. Which musicians move to the rhythm of drums? You're in step. And keeping in step is important for marching bands. Marching bands use drums not only to keep time musically, but to help them march. The saxophone was invented for a military marching band in a European country. Which country was that? Vive la France! France is a European country famous for fashion, art, fine food, and saxophones. Oh, no. Bongo Bot hates frog's legs. Keep going. We have to get to France and save him from that froggy fate. Your fourth clue is a seashell. Put it up to your ear and listen for the person who invented the saxophone. When you put an empty shell up to your ear, you don't hear the sea. You actually hear the sound of blood rushing to your ear. Some seashells make excellent trumpets. By blowing into a seashell, a musician produces what? No, that sounds right. When you blow into a shell, the air inside vibrates, and that produces musical notes. 
stringing notes together in a pattern creates music. What do you call a person who writes music? That's right. Composers don't forget what they write because they have a special system for writing down musical notes. Which of the following is not a famous composer? You named it. Antoine Joseph Sachs was an instrument maker who became famous for inventing the kazoo. <laughs> Just kidding. Sachs invented the saxophone. Well, it's time to get jazzy. Did Click on me to get us started. Ah, uh, yes. Paris in the springtime. Antoine Joseph Sachs is about to invent the saxophone. Bon voyage! There's Monsieur Sachs. He's showing off his new invention. What do you think Bongobot has up his six sleeves? Oh, no. Bongobot switched instruments. The saxophone is now a loud electric drum set. Hit the recall button and save the history of jazz. That was close. Sax has his invention back, and we've got Bungobot. Now the world of music can develop real sax appeal. Now back to the future. Press the back button on the utility belt to leave. Hey, things are looking up here. We've added another robot to the roost. Can you say sweet dreams? Oh, Dotley, you do have a hero complex, don't you? Always wanting to save the world. Just to make you happy, the next mission will be even harder. All right, we still got places to go and robots to rescue. Click on the inventory to start a mission. There's plenty of cool things to do on this floor, but unless we're on a mission, it all seems pretty pointless to me. Click on the inventory to start a mission. No time to pat ourselves on the... How's this for a throne? The world's first flushing toilet was invented 400 years ago for Queen Elizabeth I of England. Elizabeth liked the invention, but not the inventor. They had a fight, and he was banished from the kingdom. Talk about a royal flush. The first toilets were invented long before Queen Elizabeth sat on her throne. How did the world's first toilets flush? Well, Miss Winkle, early toilets had no place to send waste, so the inventor decided to just obliterate the whole mess. You pushed a button, and it exploded. Clean, simple, and sanitary. <gasps> I can't imagine how you came up with that answer, Polly, but you're exactly right. The world's first toilets required very little maintenance. Once you used it, all you did was blow it up. Nature calls, and Polly throws a hand grenade in response. I'm sure the first toilets weren't invented for a single use. What a waste. We can't stand for this. Click on the inventory button to put away the transquizzer. The people who invented the first toilets didn't stand for it either. In any case, I sent Brunwella, the robot bombshell, to take care of this one. She's not easy to miss, but these four clues sure are. A diaper, a snake, a seagull, and a penny. Brunwella, the bombshell! But, but she's my girlfriend! Well, not really my girlfriend. Well, not even really my friend, to tell you the truth. Well, she doesn't even know I exist. Okay, but she will now. Let's find those clues and save my Brunwella. Careful now, I'm going to send... Sensors on. <laughs> Keep still while I sense around for clues. Okay, all sensors indicate that Polly hit a mission clue in the painting gallery. 
There's also a mission clue in the professor's virtual collection. That's in the art gallery. Ah, I remember the good old days with the professor and all his artist friends. Now just us and Polly. Time to paint me a picture, Rockley, if you want that mission clue. See if you can figure this out. The underwater coffin. Underwater in the coffin was a bad, powerful wizard. He could make storm clouds move underwater to the sound of ocean bubbles, but he couldn't get out of the coffin, which is good because he was so bad. The gallery's filled. If you want to start a new painting, job. Just pick up the clue and add it to the inventory. Okay, all sensor. Okay, you can look at some famous works of art in the virtual collection by clicking on that machine, or you can click on the painting gallery in the back if you want to get creative. Just make sure you leave everything the way you find it. Not like Polly, always creating a mess. Check out the virtual collection. I sense there's a mission clue there. Okay, Botley and Company. There is a clue in the virtual collection. You just have to figure out where. Would it be too much to ask you for a little hint, Polly? I'll give you a hint, but first, I want to hear you beg. Don't bother begging, Botley. I know what she's talking about. I have a painting that tells the story of St. Martin and the Beggar. We have to find the right work of art to collect the mission clue. Mrs. Beasley? You're looking for a painting that tells the story of St. Martin and the Beggar. Now choose the correct category, then select one of the professor's works of art to view it on the digital display. <laughs> This beautiful work showing musicians was... In this religious painting, God is depicted as an... Shiva is one of the most important gods combined small pieces of color. When you look at this painting, ask yourself this. How did the artist make it clear that the subject of this portrait was a king? This painting of the royal family of Spain shows the beautiful little princess. The artist painted himself into the picture. Try to find him. This Egyptian wall was painted. This picture was painted 400 years ago when people would have instantly known that it was telling the story of St. Martin and the Beggar. When El Greco painted St. Martin and the Beggar 400 years ago, no one had ever seen such a strange style of painting. El Greco wanted to tell the story of how St. Martin cut his cloak in two in order to give half to a poor beggar. Notice the stormy sky, the dark grays and blues. Look at the twisted and distorted body of the beggar. El Greco used this style to show the gruesome misery of the beggar's life. Okay, since you're so smart, let's see you solve this. You didn't think I was going to let you off that easily, did you? There she goes again. You've played this puzzle before, so you should have no trouble this time around. All the work on this puzzle comes from Africa, and it is gorgeous.
No mission clues here. Let's try another floor. Is it too much to ask for people to leave the doors unlocked around here? Well, we can figure out the combination again. Hurry, hurry, hurry! I'm growing weak with hunger. It looks like you have to solve an addition problem to... You got the first lock. Two more to go. This time you'll have to solve a subtraction problem. Good luck. All right, you got two locks. Just one more. You'll need to know how to multiply to solve this problem. Ready? You did it! I knew Polly couldn't keep us out. We're in the kitchen.
Thank you so much. I couldn't eat another bite. All right, you've won, and now maybe he'll shut up. For providing such a fine feast, here's a little tip. <laughs> All right, take the... Okay, there aren't any mission clues on... Looks like the door is locked again. We'll have to figure out the password to open it. Hey, Beethoven! Please, I'm trying to finish the symphony, but I'll be here if you need help. Yo, yo! Great! Truck! Great job! Doll! Mid Some are made for... Skate! Well, you... You are right! The password is toys! <laughs> And the crowd goes wild! I hate to start this off on a sour note, but... Polly! Okay, for that little insult, I'll give you invention points only if you can play this piece. And I want it played perfectly, with feeling. Click on the... The music is all a mix... Go. This song is called Waltz Singer Matilda. It was a popular song from the Australian outback, land of the kangaroo and the koala bear. Playing Carnegie Hall. I mean it. And we've won more invention points. Put them in your inventory, then let's move on. No mission clues here. Let's try another floor. Okay, all sensors indicate that Polly hit a mission clue in the professor's biosphere. Huh, been picking up. Okay. Ooh. Listen, Grotely, because I won't get off your back till you answer this. Birds sit on the back of large grazing animals and look for what tasty morsel? A flea, a worm, or a snail? Everyone knows that. I really identify with the animal in this question. See if you can figure out which. In any beehive, there can only be one of which. 
the worker bee, the drone, or the queen bee. Big deal, you got one right. I'm in a beastly mood today. That's why I ask such tough questions. Which animal looks like it has the head of a buffalo and the rear end of a horse? A wildebeest, a seagull, or a tapeworm? Yeah, yeah, so you got it right. Don't just stick your head in the sand. Stand up and face the question. Guess which bird can't fly? A hummingbird, a flying squirrel, or an ostrich? Big deal, you got one right. Here's a pick-me-up. Which animal is smallest? The pygmy antelope, the hippopotamus, the lion? I knew you'd get that, that one. Noted, an animal that birds find on the backs of large animals. Birds like to eat these insects. Touchdown, you landed safely. Now, that was nice work. I think we should go to another floor. No doubt about it. There's a clue in the observatory. I sense that Polly's launched another one of the mission clues into space. I hope you and your buddy enjoyed the void because that's where you're headed. Come on, Polly, give us an idea where to look. Just for you, a little hint. Let's see if you're fast enough to save it. I have no idea what's in store for us this time, but we have no choice. Click on the telescope. We've got to get that transmission out of the black hole's clutches, otherwise we won't get Polly's hint. Polly's hints are six radio packets thick. Wait a maneuver! You've got another ra- Wait a maneuver! You've got another radio- Wait a maneuver! You've got another radio- Wait a maneuver! You've got another radio- Wait! You've got another radio wave packet. All right! You got all the radio packets. Now we can decode Polly's hint. We're back at the alien decoder. Just in time to retrieve Not done yet. There's more to figure out. Great! We decoded one of the sentences. Wait, there's more to be done. I couldn't make any sense out of that, but you managed to find a real sentence. Great! Oh, you made quick sense out of that messy sentence. Okay, now here's the next piece of Polly's clue. Oh, you made quick sense out of that messy sentence. Okay, now here's the next piece of Polly's clue. Oh, you made quick sense out of that messy sentence. Almost there, but it seems Polly left a grammatical booby trap. Decoding operation is completed. You broke the code. Take the light from the sun. Then multiply it 1,400 times. That's how bright my brightest star shines. I call my brightest star Spica. The light from Spica is easy to see from Earth. 
I am a young woman who escaped from the Earth. Way to go! The hint is unscrambled. Now... You need to figure out... Click on any of the constellations and this machine will tell you a little bit about them. Click on the hint button to replay Polly's hint. Click on the constellation again if you think it's the one where Polly sent the mission clue. Virgo was a beautiful young woman. Hear that? You must be right. And here comes the spaceship. We got all the mission clues. Now all we need is enough invention point. We've collected all the mission clues, but we're a little short in the invention point. We need more energy. Put the correct batteries in place. second ring. Now hold on tight, because we're about to get a mega power surge. <laughs> Wasn't that cool? That was some jolt. We've got 100% energy now, so let's go save the world. We've got everything we need to complete. We should go to the... We've got everything we need. Take a deep breath and click on the time machine. Applause! Applause! Hey, you're doing great. Start the wheel of spinning by clicking the on button. Hey, kids. Ready to save the world? Brunuela the robot bombshell is ticking away, and it's time for you to come to a rescue. As always, I'm your host, Monty Monitor, and this is Hollywood Squares. Your first clue is a diaper. It will tell you what your mission is all about. Did you know that some plastic diapers have a longer life than the babies who wear them? Diapers pollute the environment. What helps protect the environment? Good work! Recycling things like aluminum cans, glass bottles, and plastic helps to control the amount of garbage that pollutes the environment. Recycling helps to conserve what? You're a natural at this. Natural resources are things nature produces that help people live their lives. For the sake of future generations, it's important not to waste them. Which of the following uses up a natural resource? All right. Every time you flush a toilet, you use more than a gallon of water. You found what your mission is all about. Toilets. Brunuela was sent back to the invention of the toilet? Hmm, this could get interesting. Your second clue is a penny. The penny will tell you when in history the toilet was invented. Start saving your pennies. It only takes 100 million pennies to become a millionaire. Which president is on the U.S. penny? That's right! Abe Lincoln led America through the difficult years of the Civil War. 
Many people consider him to be the best president America ever had. What was Abe Lincoln's occupation before he became a politician? Good going! Lincoln went from an expert on laws to a maker of laws. There were no lawyers before the invention of laws. In which year were there laws that people followed? That's right! By the year 2000 BC, the ancient Babylonians had invented laws to keep order. In that same year, another culture invented the toilet. We're heading all the way back to 2000 BC? I hope there are rest stops along the way. Your third clue is a snake. The snake will show you where toilets were invented. Don't be afraid of snakes. Bee stings and lightning kill more people every year than snakes do. But if you're still worried, you should live in Alaska. There are no snakes in Alaska. Which other state has no snakes? No, Lent Aloha. The entire state of Hawaii was formed by volcanic explosions under the sea. Hawaii is a group of what? Of course, an island is a body of land, smaller than a continent, but completely surrounded by water. Which of the following is also an island? No, a strip. Good guess. Crete is an island in the Mediterranean Sea. It was the island home of the Minoan civilization. All right, one more clue to go and we're out of here. Your fourth clue is a seagull. The seagull will show you where your mission will take place. The seagull is a hungry bird. If you ate as much as a seagull eats, you'd have to consume 285 pounds of meat every day. That's a lot to swallow. Which of the following do seagulls not eat? That's right. Seaweeds are plants that live in the sea. Some seaweeds can grow hundreds of feet long. They grow on rocks and on the seabed. Seaweed is eaten by which people? Yes, that's right. Seaweed's popular in Japan. Japanese restaurants are helping to make seaweed popular around the world. Japanese people live on the islands known as Japan. Who lived on the island known as Crete? That's right! The Minoans lived on the island of Crete 4,000 years ago. They developed an advanced civilization with palaces, writing, and even toilets. Off we go. It's time to stop Brunuela from flushing the history of the toilet, uh, down the toilet. Before we take this trip back in time, can I just tell you how amazing I think you are? That said, grab the time key and let's move out. Ready for another ride? Click on me then. Hold on. The island of Crete 4,000 years ago. The Minoan people had built a paradise on Earth. But what we've got to find is the world's first toilet. It's Brunuela, the robot bombshell. And there's a Minoan guy. 
It looks like he just walked out of the... um... facilities. Oh no! Manuel is gonna blow that baby up! Hit the recall button before the world's first toilet gets flushed to smithereens! Check it out! The world's first toilet was flushed by Mother Nature. The tides came in and cleaned the whole thing out. Pretty cool. Now hold on while I steer this contraption back. Phew, we made it back. Always a good sign. Press the back button on the utility belt to leave the time machine. We need to put this robot to rest. Hey, things are looking up here. We've added another robot to the roost. Can you say sweet dreams? So, Rotley, you think you foiled my plan by rescuing all those robots? Well, my test score may be zero now, but there's still that extra credit question. And Miss Winkle says that extra credit questions always more than make up for the rest of the test. This extra credit question involves the origins of the universe. Now, we all know she's expecting me to discuss the Big Bang. But I'd rather discuss the Big Bot. Yeah, that's right. I think the universe started with a robot named Botley. Me? But I thought there was, I don't know, mutual respect developing between us. Save me the schmaltz, Blotly. Daddy programmed you to obey me, so I order you to march on over to the handy-dandy time machine and set those dials to way, way back to the beginning of the universe. But, Polly, the beginning of the universe would mean the end of me. You can't mean that. You should never have tried to stop me, Plodly. I mean, I didn't deserve that big fat F on my test. No, I really had no choice but to send those robots back to change history so I could get the A I so richly deserved. The A Miss Winkle refused to give me. I know my father said I was never, ever under any circumstances to play with his time machine. But I know in my heart that if he were here right now, he'd say, Polly, Miss Winkle robbed you. Now go out there and change the history of the world, you brave, brilliant, beautiful little girl. <clears throat> Uh-oh. Professor Spark! Oh, it's so good to see you. Hello, Botley. Hello, Polly. So, how is the annual Time Warp Inventors Convention, Daddy? As fun as usual? Yes, it was very informative. Very informative indeed. Funny how you think you know a thing or two about history, and then all of a sudden, it changes on you. But Daddy, I, I can explain. I'm waiting. Um, um, Botley made me do it. He must have a faulty chip or something. I tried to stop him, but he was out of control. Oh, Daddy, I'm so glad you're home. Nice try, Polly. But I think Miss Winkle might tell a different tale. Oh, Daddy, Miss Winkle just doesn't understand. I thought she did, but she doesn't. Fortunately, Polly, she understands enough to let you retake that quiz right now. Hello, Polly. I'm so glad to give you this opportunity. Of course, because you took the test once, I can't give you the same questions. So I've made up another test just for you. I hope you've been brushing up on your Latin. Latin? Latin? Oh, but Daddy! Good old Professor Spark. Nothing gets by him. You just wait till next time, Smotly. Okay, now that all the robots are home safe, feel free to stay and explore the mountain all you want. But don't count Polly out just yet. She could still show up at any time. All right, things are going well. That area way in back of me is where all the professor's time-traveling robots are stored. It does my CPU chip good to know that I've helped bring these guys back where they belong. All right, things are going well.